mother Tell your children not to walk my way Tell your children not to hear my word Hello all and welcome to this And this is my review of Sacrifice 2008 And I, let me just say I have come on here I have defended Vince Russo I have said, you know, it's not all Vince Russo's fault. Things started getting bad before Vince Russo got there. But I will not defend Vince Russo on this pay-per-view because this pay-per-view was el crapo, el shitty, el do not waste your money, do not waste your time. I was upset that I even wasted my time watching this pay-per-view. I didn't even waste my money on it. This was bad and horrible. It really was. I, you know, I, at times I was like, you know, maybe I should turn this off. But I was like, I'll keep watching. Maybe it'll get better. And it never did. It never, ever did. Now, just so you know, started, started the night. They came on. Kurt Angle got hurt in Korea. Had to, wasn't going to be able to be in the main event. So, so there you go. So basically, at the start of the show, what we had to look forward to was Joe versus Scott Steiner. Yeah. Now, we now we start with the Deuces Wild matches, the tag team tournament matches. Now, this is I have a huge problem with because you have a good tag team division. You do. You have tag teams that should have been in this, like the Motor City Machine Guns and the Rock and Ray Connection. They could have been in this, and you wouldn't have had these random messed up teams that didn't make any sense because some of these teams made sense. You know, Cage and Rhino. That that does make a little bit of sense. Really, it does. And Super Eric, as does Super Eric and uh, and AJ. Those, you know, you can make that make sense. But some of the rest of these was just dumb. It was for story angles, and it just made the tournament come off looking like it should have been on impact. Really, it did. Uh, Sting and James Storm versus uh, Team 3D was garbage. Um, a star and a half. It... You know, basically, Sting didn't really care about the tag team titles, left James Storm to his own device. They kind of set it up to where it kind of made sense, but still, it was just like, what? why wouldn't you do this? Why are you doing this on the start of the pay-per-view? And just let us know what kind of pay-per-view we were in for. I thank them for that, though. Then we got Robert Roode and Booker T versus Christian Cage and Rhino. Another, this, this would have been good. They didn't give it enough time. They didn't give it any of these first-round matches enough time, which I will get to that in a second. Um, now, I understand there was ten matches on here, but give me a second on this part. Um, again, this wasn't very good, and I guess Booker T is now a heel for no apparent reason whatsoever. I understand they have been setting this up, but what's the reason of making Booker T heel? Really, what, what what's the purpose? Then we got Kip James and Matt Morgan versus LAX. Yeah, you can tell how that went. This was the shortest, I think, of the first round matches. And, yeah, one star. Um, AJ and Super Eric versus Awesome Kong and BG James. This made very little sense. I want to know why people weren't up in arms over this like they were when, you know, the WWE was doing this sort of thing with China. China. I don't really care. That didn't make much... That doesn't really bother me. But... Again, I think you have better ways to use Kong than this. You know, this was just not good either. I, I, I don't know what... I just don't get it. I don't understand why this was on here. Another star and a half match. It was what it was. Um, and, and had a lot to... Would have would have been better because I enjoyed this. But AJ, for whatever reason, was just off. Off. Was just... Was just off for whatever reason, and and basically BJ had to save him in this match. That's not good when BJ James has to save you in a match. Uh, next we had the Terror Dome, and my biggest problem with this, and, and I have the pr same problem with this as I do with the Knockouts match. You had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You had ten guys in this match. If I counted correctly, ten guys in this match. Well, you had all those women in the knockouts match, and they had to take time to set up the. They had to take time to set up the terror dome, and on top of that, they also let everybody have their entrances. No, 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 no. They, they shouldn't have done that. I understand that people are like, oh, they could have given their entrances. No, 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 no. You didn't have time. 
you should have given the tag team matches a little bit more time by cutting off. The, I'm telling you, it was 10, 10 to 12 minutes of this pay-per-view. You could have given, you know, spread it out between those first round matches, probably made them a little better. Um, you know, but anyways, uh, the Terror Dome was what the Terror Dome was. It was, you know, the thing about this match is that I've seen the AAA version. The trip. Triple A ring, which is like the TNA ring, is bigger, and so our Terror Dome is bigger than this. And because of that, they also used less guys. You had too many guys in too small of a space; it just became convoluted, spot too spotty, just too ugh. It was it was you know a good X division match. Uh, they also announced that the winner would get a shot in the main event to replace Kurt Angle. So at, as plus the number one contenders match, blah 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 blah. Good match. Kaz won, which is always good. Um, a good three-star match. Um, then we had Team 3D versus Rhino and Christian. This is a match I think most people would think would be good. They did give them enough time that they just didn't flow very well. Um, it was still okay, but just, you know, you, you could just tell just wasn't really off. You know, a good two-star match. Then we had AJ and Eric, Super Eric versus LAX. This was good, um, without a doubt. Well, what you would expect from these guys. Uh, Eric and Hernandez had some funny bits. It was just kind of a good, entertaining two-and-a-half-star match. Then we had the ma knockouts makeover match. Again, the entrances took forever. You didn't need the entrances to take this long. It was kind of moronic. You know, I understand you want everyone to kind of get their place to shine, but it was a little too much, in my opinion, particularly with ten matches on this card. Uh, the the Royal Rumble portion, or the Royal Rumble, the Battle Royal portion of this sucked ass. And that's just the God honest truth. Once they got to the latter portion, the latter portion was pretty good. Now, it came down to Kim and Rox, but to make this even more, more convoluted than it was before, Kim actually had immunity from getting her hair cut. So, since Love was the person that was eliminated before her, Love couldn't leave. And if Roxy won, Love would get her haircut. Makes sense. In the person of their view, it makes sense. Now, Love kept interfering because of that reason on Kim's behalf. Except Kim kept accepting the interference and, you know, it was this weird, like, huh? And then after the match, Kim came to Roxy's, like, defense. And it was like, you just cost her the match. You could have, you know, if, if you didn't like, you know, what, you know. It was just kind of weird and didn't make a lot of sense in that part of it. What I still give this, you know, I think this was good. I really do. I still give it three stars, mainly because at the end, after they cut Roxy's hair, I think Roxy actually got over more um, with her hair being cut, and I think that is better for the division as a whole. Um, next, we had Team 3D versus LAX. Um, this was the finals of the tag tournament, um, I have to wonder, you know, th this is what I mean, you, we went through this whole tournament to get Team 3D and LAX again, instead of throwing all the tag teams in there and giving us something maybe we haven't seen before, which is always kind of a beauty of a tournament, um, this was a good match, but I, I you know, Almost good. I give it two and three quarter stars. There were some nice little spots. Um, I think it came off as a is, is pretty good. I, but for a finals of a tournament, you just you just kind of hope for something better than this. Then we got the world title match: Samoa Joe and Scott Steiner versus Kaz. This was good. Definitely match of the night, as you would expect. Um, I'd give it three and a half stars, even with Steiner botching, because Ste Steiner was a hindrance in this match, though he did pull off some pretty good stuff, and he did carry his weight to some extent. He kind of he, he was kind of neutral, because the bad stuff that he did, he kind of did some good things that were kind of neutral to doubt. But, um, yeah, that, that, but Joe, you know, Joe and Kaz and all of this, though Joe did pin Steiner, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and I do think they made the best out of the situation with Angle not being there. That said, this pay-per-view was lacking a lot. It wasn't very good. Um, I found myself very bored 
through a lot of this pay-per-view, and I kept thinking maybe it'll get better, maybe it'll get better. You know, through the first half, I was like, well, I want to see the Terror Dome. So I, I set through until I get to the Terror Dome, and I was like, eh, you know, I was hoping it would be better than that. Then I wanted to wait. I wanted to, then with Taz winning, I wanted to wait and see, um, you know, what they were going to do with him in the main event. And we got to see that, and it didn't come off very well, in my opinion. But, um, you know, still, I'd give this a 5.5. I don't think this was a very good pay-per-view at all. I would, you know, do not recommend this. Stay, stay far, far away from this pay-per-view. Not good. Sorry. Later. Bye.